We're rolling. Mm -hmm. What's going on? BTDubs.com. This is the Tom Hardy, Knife Wonders Academy. Smile when you see me, cause I'm a rare specimen. Testing him, you would need more than just estrogen. Time party hot as California wildfires. Y'all should pay me a hundred mil like the Knicks and call me Stoudemire. For the money. Uh, sorry that I'm later than I said. Thick skull, you could land a crater on my head. And you could probably find me on a Tuesday. Oh, I got the name the Tom Hardy. My government name is Thomas Hardison. So it is just really a shortening of, of both of those names, Tom Hardy. Um, there's an actor named Tom Hardy, so we decided for legal purposes to start the name with the, the Tom Hardy, the Tom Hardy, whatever. And uh, that it kind of stuck, people, see, people seem to like it. I abuse tracks like Lindsay Lohan abuses pills. Oh. Durham and Chapel Hill, Hill. Raleigh I had Greenboro. never, I've been writing poetry like terrible poetry since I was in like elementary school, middle school, and then in high school I started to to write it a little bit more seriously. Um, I was always I always loved hip hop, so I always like in the back of my mind thought it would be cool to be a rapper, but I never, you know, being who I am, I never expected myself to actually be able to do it until um, I guess my junior year in high school, or I guess it was my junior year in high school. My my English teacher, I had a crush on my English teacher, Miss Olivar, <laughs> and she um, she had like a little a sign up on like her blackboard. It was like slam poetry contest in Chapel Hill for amateur blah blah. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> and I was just, I, just, I guess I thought it would impress her, and I could be around her after class if I could, uh, if I could, you know, do that slam poetry contest and like practice it in front of her and. Wonder if she would see a different side of me as her student and like want to have like a Mary Kay Letourneau type relationship <laughs> with me. You know, obviously that didn't work out, but it worked out where I entered the poetry contest. There was like 12 kids in it. I got second place. It was really, I almost got first place. I got robbed. My poem was very funny. The other guy's poem was very like depressing and like uh, dark. And I guess he got points for being emo, but um, <laughs> I got second place and the feeling that I got based off the crowd's reaction and, and when I got done was like the best feeling in the world and so I just kept chasing that feeling and started and slam poetry to me just isn't cool like it's, it's like it's pretentious and so I stopped doing that and I decided to just rap and rap over beats because that's a lot more fun you can make money rapping you can't make money talking about your life and the government and you know, welfare checks and stuff like in slam poetry. So, um, yeah, that's really how it got started. And that got the ball rolling for rapping and, and being a hip hop artist. And the game scaring it. Oh my God. And I'm in Durham all day writing rap records. Um, I really wasn't that aware of my dad's drumming past until I was probably like nine or 10 years old. And he never had a drum set at the house and he bought one. He brought me to buy it one day. We, we went uh, out of town to buy like a real nice drum set. He brought it into the house to set it up and I helped him set it up and he was, uh, he, you know, he, he was like, I haven't played the drums in 15 or 20 years, son. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and I, you know, I wasn't expecting him to be very good. And he just, like, he's a natural. Like, he just started up and it sounded great. And um, so he, he's a very, he's a gifted drummer. And, um, I wouldn't say that it influenced me a whole lot other than I think it's probably in my genes to have rhythm. Uh, not something a lot of white guys have. So, you know, luckily, you know, I was blessed with that, having a drummer for a father. He likes it. I mean, he didn't, he's older and he, you know, he, he didn't really come up on hip hop at all. He came up on, uh, you know, the Beatles and stuff like that, Jimi Hendrix. But um, he has a definite respect for hip hop music and for the art of emceeing and, and different things like that. I feel like anyone that is involved in music and has a passion for music should be able to uh, should be able to appreciate other genres of music even if they don't particularly like it. It's not that he doesn't like it. He, he enjoys my music and he's told me. But um, I play it for him and he likes it and he, he's receptive to what I'm doing. Up and away, way. I'm in Durham all day. day. Probably getting blamed. Blame. North Carolina is weird because we're definitely a part of the South, but it's like bordering on not being the South. It's like the middle of the East Coast up there, you know, 
you get hired in North Carolina and you're in Virginia and people don't, you know, Virginia is just like gray area. Like, is that the South? Is it, what is it? Um, but the thing about North Carolina that's weird is we have established a reputation through Ninth Wonder, through the, um, the Justice League, Little Brother, and um, other artists like that. We've established a reputation globally as a place that makes a lot of uh, traditional native tongues types hip hop. And um, we obviously have that, and that's you know pretty similar to what I make. I feel like I'm evenly influenced between that and between um, between Southern hip hop because I grew up really loving Outkast and, and Goody Mob and the Dungeon Family and, and Field Mob and, pe and people like that. Um, so what I really try and do is let those two styles converge into my music because I have a Southern accent that comes out when I'm rapping and. Um, you know, sometimes when I don't choose the uh, the ninth S beats, I'll choose a more a more southern sounding beat because I feel like that can fit my style also. You know, so I try and bring both together. But um, there is a stereotype in the South as, as having one kind of rap, but you know, people all over make all different types of music. I've heard you know snap music by New York people before, so it's like you know, depending on no matter where somebody is from you don't know what type of music they're gonna make because you don't know where their family's from, you don't know who their influences are, so it's always good to judge somebody based off of their music and not by their, um, their era. Telling me, Hardy, you need to act better. What? You need to back away. I met Ninth when he was teaching a, uh, a class at North Carolina Central University, which was like five minutes down the street from uh, where I was taking classes. I was 18, and I skipped one of my classes to sit on his hip-hop class, and, um, I went up to him after class, nervous, palms were sweaty, bomb spaghetti type stuff. And I was like, uh, hey man, I'm Tom, I wanna, uh, I'm a rapper, I wanna, I wanna rap for you. And he just started laughing. And once he stopped laughing, I just, um, I went up uh, with him to his studio and played him a couple of songs I had on my jump drive. And he, he liked one of them and he didn't like the other one. He was very honest with me and uh, from that point on I just kind of kept going up there like a couple of times a week, two, three times a week for like a year and a half and got better and better by observing what he did and what his other artists did. And um, over time, um, you know, January 09, he decided to sign me. So, to the academy. Rock it, rock it. Fat wallet in my Levi jeans pocket. pocket. Um, we've got a studio in Raleigh called Bright Lady Studios. And there's never a dull moment there. Like, there's never not someone making beats, never not someone writing raps, recording, doing whatever. Like, the whole crew is basically there, you know, half the time that they're off work. You know what I mean? Like, um, working towards music. Um, so, when you go there, you just feel the vibes of, you know, creativity and people really wanting to create and wanting to make the best stuff. So it's natural that when you're around creative people, you're more motivated to be creative yourself. And um, I definitely think some of my best raps are written when I'm writing a song with other people at Bright Lady, because I don't want to have the worst verse. So it's like it's like you gotta you gotta keep up with with your competition, even when it's friendly competition, even when it's your music family. So it definitely rubs off on you, like the. The, uh, creativity. After dark in the room or either parked in the back seat shuffling. Yeah. Liverpool is Ninth's production team, Ninth Wonder's production team, and it's made of made up of Ninth Wonder, Crisis, E Jones, Fatin, Cash, and Amp. And those are the six producers. Um, they all bring something a little bit different to the table. E Jones' style is a lot more theatrical, and he he has a tendency to play out a lot of more live instruments in his um, in his music. Um, you know, everyone's familiar with Night Sound. Cash is is a disciple of Night Sound and emulates that with his own original twist. Um, Amp has a very gritty sound. He does a lot of Amp is like a master of, of putting in scratched in hooks, like Premiere, like obviously not you know on some Premiere shit, but just really on his own type of thing and for ten for ten did a record called uh, Cake for Lloyd Banks 50 Cent this is really dope. Everybody has their own style but it really everyone has their own original style but styles that complement each other's. I don't really have one specific person in the group that 
Um, I work with better than the others, but I've heard from people that, uh, like from people that listen to my music, that my music with Crisis like stands out. I've got a couple records with Crisis. I've got one called Boo Hoo, another one called Epic Beard Man. Um, and, and I feel like his style is very, very unorthodox, and I feel like that matches my flow and my delivery. So Crisis, maybe, maybe Crisis if I had to pick one. I'd love to work with a producer from Atlanta named Mr. DJ. Hopefully he's watching this somehow. We'll get in contact uh, Mr. With DJ him. was uh, a part of a, a production team with Andre 3000 and Big Boy called Earth Tone 3, and along with them he made Miss Jackson, Bombs Over Baghdad, Art of Storytelling, and, um, bunch of different beats he's to me like he has the illest drums and just his sounds like the way that his beat sound is how I want to sound as, a, as an MC if that makes sense so I'd really love to be able to link up with uh, Mr. DJ sometime in the future I think that's that's on its way shouldn't be too hard to do yeah I'm a beast on the mic when I speak what I write girls June 7th um, with Green Lantern and Ninth Wonder it's called um, Secret of the Green Magic and it's my best music to date. Um, it's pretty diverse, and I feel like it's gonna definitely reach a lot of people. Um, definitely more people than my mixtape last year, which I also love. Uh, it's called Curse the Green Faced It, but Secret of the Green Magic is definitely gonna reach more people, and it's definitely gonna really hit people when they hear it. Um, so I'm excited about that. I'm on this tour called Sneaker Pimps, and uh, it's about halfway through. Um, I already had stops in LA and Chicago. Got Miami coming up on Saturday and then uh, D.C. and New York. So, what's that uh, tour about? Like, what's who's on it? And Sneaker Pimps, it's just... Sneaker Pimps is cool. Like, it, it's very... It's not your typical tour because it's, it's like a sneaker lifestyle convention, like, every time they set it up. Like, you walk into the different places and there's just these, like, chain link fences inside of the places with these, like, original shoes, like, tied up to the fences. And it's like... Um, you know, artists that, you know, took, you know, some white forces or some dunks and turned it, used that as their canvas for their art. And um, so you get to see that and, you know, the, the demographics of people that come out there are sneakerheads and people that like, you know, people that fuck with hip hop. So it's a good, it's been a good experience. Um, LA, the opening act, or the, the headliners were Travis Barker and the Cool Kids. And Chicago, it was Raekwon. Um, Miami is going to be really fun as well. So, um, and they haven't announced uh, the last two things, but they're taking it day by day. But uh, me and uh, Phil Ade from uh, from DC, from uh, the DMV area, are the two young artists that you know got called up by Sneaker Pimps to go to all the different stops. Awesome. And so that's been a cool experience for me and Phil. Big D to a thick free. She likes it. No comparison. Hardest and not nervous. Popping up is she wants to move by NERD. Um, off the album Fly or Die. I really like NERD and I really like them more in the past life. I mean, I was, I was listening to that type of music a lot more heavily. Um, Pharrell is a genius, Chad Hugo is a genius, and their music is dope. So I, I think I have all, I think I actually have all three of their albums on here. So She Wants to Move by NERD, that's the first one. Uh, the second one is The Dope Man by T.I. from T.I. vs. T.I.P. I don't really remember what that sounds like. But I just know that I like that album, so that's why it's on. Um, T.I. is a free T.I. <laughs> T.I. is an extremely gifted MC, and it, it sucks that he's been in all these uh, legal situations. I guess it's his fault, but at the same time, like he's you know way too talented to be um, locked up. And the <laughs> the third one is "Hold This Blow" by Redman from Red uh, Red Gone Wild. I know exactly what that sounds like. Um, Redman is, is probably my favorite um, New York, New Jersey MC. Like his style is just so like he he never switches up his style. Like I don't I can I can't remember a Redman song where he's like not talking shit about people and not just punchline punchline punchline. And I, I for one you know for a weird reason I really respect that about him because he doesn't he doesn't try and cater to anybody he just is like look this is who i am i'm a goofy dude that wants to talk shit and i'm gonna do that on every record and he does and he's you know he obviously says really dope stuff red man is definitely one of my favorite scenes so it's funny that you know it makes sense <laughs> sure that everybody um watching this now goes on dtimehardy.com or djbooth.net 
It checks out my mixtape with Green Lantern. It's called Secret of the Green Magic, and it drops on October 27th. It's a big, it's a big deal for me. It's my baby, and we've been working on it for a long time. So um, I think everybody will really enjoy it. Now, never be no greasy go, no sleazy holes allowed. Please leave me alone. East End is probably where. Okay, it's back. It was. <laughs> it stopped for a second. I don't know how to work this thing. Okay.